Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. So gather outside the church. When you you're gather, going to survive, God has to step in your feet. my eyes into the hills from which come my help. I believe, brothers and sisters, that with this text today, we see God inviting you back. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without fault before his throne. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, and I know I'm not speaking for myself, so we can all say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? Good morning, Ben Washington. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to this, our first Sunday unity service. We're just so glad to see you guys, everybody here. Um, our order of service this morning will be a scripture, then a prayer, and then our praise team will take us into our... Um, whole day the whole day because we we are going to be in church all day right this is it right this is the place where you come to church all day all day i scared two people that's all so i did my job god bless you would you please stand for the word i'd like to say good morning to everybody truly god is good all the time and all the time god is good for your listening and hearing this morning, I chose uh, just one verse, but you know, it's really, really powerful. And you know, it's coming from John, the third chapter, verse 16. And we all should know this by heart. And it reads, for God so loved the world yes, he did. that he gave his only begotten you, son, Jesus. that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting, but have everlasting life. Amen. You may be seated. I could have read more, but you know that one verse is, is powerful. Oh, yeah. Powerful. Thank you, sir. And now as we get ready to pray, the verse that Brother Ivory read connotes liberty. We realize that through God and the beautiful sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ, we do have liberty. We're not constricted nor restricted by all of the things that the world has. Because when we come closer and closer to him, we have liberty. If there ain't in the back and in the sides, you're most certainly welcome to come on in, come on in, come on in. If not, let us get ready to pray. Let us bow. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father in heaven, we come once more and again thanking you, thanking you, thanking you for all those things. Father in heaven, we can't thank you enough. We look around, listen on the radio, listen on the TV. Things are happening now that has shows that the world is spiraling more and more out of control. But through it all, within it all, and around it all, we realize that you are sovereign, you are great, you are holy, and you will take these, your people, under your arms and you will protect them. Oh, yes. Father in heaven, as we believe and as we come more and more toward you, we thank you. Because we realize that through this, your beautiful words still speak to us. Oh, yes. You've told us in your scripture that you've loved us ever since we've been born. You've loved us even before we've been born. You've told us that we are your people. Yes. You told us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. With those words, dear Master, we have confidence in knowing that each and every day we move, each and every day we breathe, each and every day we come out into this world, we are protected. Thank you, dear Master. Thank you. And as we get ready to go into this today, realizing that someone somewhere needs a word, yeah. that, you bring, that you bring an extra amount of measure of the Spirit to one who is about the word so that we can internalize it so that we can have it so to live in our lives once again before i leave dear master we ask you to please bless the pastor of this church the first lady in their family watch over them as they lead teach and guide these your people 
knowing that it's not an easy thing. And because it's not an easy thing, we ask for your forgiveness for all those things that we've done that are against your will. Watch over those that are ministering to Washington as a service to the pastor. Watch over them. Watch over their families. Lead them and guide them as we go more and more closer to you. Watch over those that are watching over us throughout this day, the first responders. The military, both active and also retired. Watch over the medical community and also the teachers. All of those individuals that are working to help us develop to be better people. We ask you to please watch over those that are traveling the, the streets and the highways and byways just to come to you. We ask you to please watch over those that I may have forgotten in my feeble mind. These are the blessings we ask the Son Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning.
you're going through, he'll work it out. Yeah. Whatever the situation, he'll work it out.
Let's give Reverend Sutton a hand as he comes.
Amen. What a, what a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Well, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. The scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Has God been good to you? Say so. Did he wake you up this morning? Say so. Amen. The God we serve is a good God. Amen. 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 I, I can tell you guys come to worship today. Now you're in the right place at the right time to give God some praise. So I want to thank all of you for being here this morning and I, I want you to take a look at uh, your program. Take a look at your program. The names that are on the list for prayer. We want to pray for those. Dwight, can you give me one? I want to add some more names because these are names that came in after we printed the programs, but I'm going to ask you to add Brother Willie Swigert. Willie had surgery on Thursday, and he's recuperating. He, he normally drives the van, and Brother Johnson helped out this morning. Uh, but let's be in pri prayer for Brother Willie Swigert. Uh, Sister Jackie Madden's dad had to be rushed to the emergency room, and uh, I don't know the status, but I want you to be in prayer for him. Uh, Sister Lisa Burden had a, a nephew. Uh, his last name is John. I believe it's Quinn Jones. He had surgery also on Thursday. Uh, be in prayer for him, and there are some others. Uh, but we're going to ask that you just take one minute right where you are, to lift up those individuals that's on the program and that have asked for prayer, as well as those whose names we have uh, requested. We're going to pray in silence. Amen? Amen. One minute. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask now uh, if we can get the uh, video announcements. But before we do the video announcements, if you are a visitor, would you just please stand? If you're a visitor of Ben Washington Baptist Church, if you would just please stand. Any visitors to Ben Washington Baptist Church? Amen. We have two. We have three. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, you saw where they were, and that's Jackie Okadai's mother. Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of the entire Ben Washington Baptist family, we want to uh, welcome you to our church. Thank you for being here. You could have been somewhere else today, but you chose to be here, and so we are grateful and thankful for your presence. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we'll have our video announcements. Hello and good morning.
morning, my brothers and sisters of the Ben Washington Baptist Church. I'm Minister White with your news, information, announcements, and reminders. Yes. And I couldn't do it by myself. Next to me is Lanita, who does such a fabulous and wonderful <laughs> job. She's so exciting. All right, we're having problems. <laughs> Good morning. Amen. Good morning. You know, the devil's been busy today. Family. Happy Independence Day. He's trying to tell Dance people to go home. Is eat beans He's today. trying to tell people don't Deacon come. He's, love that. He love He's beans. trying to tell people Let's don't smile. This Monday, He's trying to tell all people, activities uh, are canceled uh, in honor. Can't wait to get out of here. All right, so let's move on to Amen. Tuesday. Amen. He's telling people, Tuesday leave early. Is youth choir Amen. So please Don't us, let parents, the devil steal you your joy. Amen. Also, Amen. Youth, Amen. So, we need all the help so we're going to hold off on the announcements, Raheem. We're going to hold off on the announcements. And we're going to ask Brother Derek and Jason to go on and lead us in that song. And there's no better day than to study the Bible other than and yes. Wednesday, can we, noonday can we Bible cue it? study. Uh, in All right. All right. Thank you. 
It's not over. Am I right? It's not over. Amen. Now, remain standing. Remain standing. If you have your Bible, and you should have your Bible, whether it be on a, on a phone or an iPad or whether it be... a Bible that you carry you would turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. And then I have one other book I want you to turn to, which is 1 John, chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 2. And 1 John, chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 8, it reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, 1 John chapter 5, one verse. 1 John chapter 5, just one verse. Verse 13. These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know, highlight that, underline it, that you may know that you have eternal life. Father God, we pray now in the name of Jesus. Speak to us. May we all have listening ears, anticipating heart, or we pray, Father, that the word will fall on good ground. Instruct us now in the better ways of our salvation for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to speak, I want to ask a question. I've been towing around all week on giving us some catchy title, but I can't come up with a catchy title today. Play it out, Pastor. Play it out. 
So I'm just going to ask a question. Right. And you, sh you need to have your Bibles because this is church. All right. Baseball players, they, they bring their bats to the game. Football players, they, they have their shoulder pads and they have their helmets and cleats and they have their uniform, am I right? Those who are in the military, they have their, they have their weapons. Yeah. Those in the church, we have our Bible. Don't, go, don't leave home without it, amen? We have to get back to the fundamentals of our faith, which is the word of God. So here's the question I have, Jackie and Al and uh, Brother Curry and Sister Dunbar. Here's the question I have. And I know there are some people in the room who may see this as a controversial question, but it's not. But I do plan to actually speak on some controversial Christian topics for the next three weeks. Right. So here's the question. Can you lose your salvation? Don't answer the question out loud. Can you lose your salvation? Believe it or not, I have asked these questions of a lot of people over the years. One of the questions I tend to want to ask them, Will, is, are you a Christian? I asked somebody in the choir stand this morning, are you a Christian? Sometimes I see a visitor, I ask the question, are you a Christian? Yesterday at the wedding, Vicki Garrett got, got married. I asked the question, are you a Christian? Now, a lot of people don't really have a clear definition of a Christian because they oftentimes confuse church membership with being the same as being a Christian. Uh, we would like it to be the same, but not everybody who's a member of a local congregation is actually a Christian. Just telling the truth. I would like to believe that everybody in this house this morning, that all of us are going to be in heaven one day. But I can't say that for everybody, and you can't say that for everybody either. But you ought to be able to say that for yourself. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. And so sometimes we ask people, are you, are you saved? Are you a Christian? And I get this from people who say, yes, I'm a Christian. But then I ask them, are you saved? And they say, yes. Then I ask them, well, how do you know? And then I'll get an answer like this. Well, I hope I am. I, 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 I think I am. I want to be. I'm trying to get there. And ooh, that's a big one. I'm trying to get there. And I need us to understand your answer needs to be biblically based. What does the Bible say? You ever been in the house and couldn't find your keys to your car? <laughs> Doesn't it bother you that you got to search the house to find your keys? Every now and then my wife would do something that just bugs me, and, 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 but I do it. She said, Daryl, can you call me on the phone? And she says that because she can't find her phone. It's in the house. She had it, but she can't find it. And there are some people just like that. They believe that they had salvation. But now they can't find it. 
And so they, they have a big question mark on their, on the, uh, Pedro in their, uh, in their minds. And I'm not sure. And some of us are getting up older in age. Yes, yes. And I don't want you on your last moments, as you know, you exit into the other side, wondering. The train that you're getting on, is it smoking or non-smoking? I think you ought to know. So let's see, Brother Gibson, what the Bible says. Right. Ephesians chapter 2 says this. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. There are people right now who are trying to, who are basing their going to heaven on their performance. The truth of the matter is there is none of us, according to the scriptures, that is righteous. There is none righteous, no, not one. Not one of us. Meet God's qualification of being righteous on our own. As a matter of fact, anybody who is under that impression, let me tell you what the Old Testament prophet said. Our righteousness is like filthy rags in his sight. Filthy. That's our righteousness. It's filthy. Yeah. It's a gift. It's a gift. So if it's a gift, it means you did not earn it. And that's why I love that scripture, Peter, that says, not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, when you get to heaven, you're not going to be able to brag. You're not going to be able to stick your chest out and say, I earned it. Yeah, I I'm the man. Yeah. Oh. I did it. Yeah. You, can't, you can't be like Frank Sinatra and say, I did it my way. My way. Yeah. You can't get to heaven on your way. You got to get it the only way it's been delivered. And that's a gift. Now, because we don't study the Bible and because we haven't grown in our faith, some may be like I was before I got in the Word. I believe, yes, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and I accepted him, but then I was under the false assumption, and there may be some people in this room right now, that I got saved, but the dependence on remaining saved was going to be based on if I did more good than bad the rest of my days. Y'all yeah, remember when Donald Trump was trying to find just 11,000 more votes? There are some people here trying to find 11,000 more good works. It's like it's a scale. And if the scales tip in my favor, I can run on in. Right. But if it's leaning on the other side, right. that's not biblical. Works had nothing to do with you getting saved. Right. It is by his grace. The word grace means unmerited favor, Tiffany. It means none of us deserve it. It was just a gift. Just a gift. We weren't entitled to it. We, we didn't earn it. None of us have straight A's. None of us. I barely got through high school. 
but I got through. I barely made it through college. And I tried to get my wife to do my homework and she wouldn't. I thought that's what girlfriend did. She said no. I had to struggle, friend, but I got there. But when it comes to salvation, I don't have to worry because it ain't dependent on me. It was by his grace that I'm here. And that's why I love him. That's why I sing for him. That's why I owe him because it was his grace that saved me. It was his grace that delivered me. And I'm glad about it. That's why I can say, oh, happy day. When Jesus washed all my sins away. Now, listen, listen, listen. Is there anybody in the room want to admit that you're a sinner? Just raise your hand so I can see what you see. Good. Now, there are four ways to sin. Can I just tell you who? The four ways. Y'all know them, right? You can sin by what you do. Have you done anything you shouldn't do? You can sin by what you say. Anybody in here said something? This week you ought not to have said. You can sin by what you think. If you didn't say it, did you think it? And the Jesus, Jesus made it plainly aware that if you think it, it's sin. Because the Pharisees thought, well, if I didn't do it, it's not sin. But Jesus said, if you lust in your heart, You've already committed adultery. Come on now. Somebody know what I'm talking about. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. Then you can sin by what you ought to do that you don't do. Well, can I lose my salvation? Now look what 1 John says. These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Yeah that you may know. In other words, pay, you don't have to guess. You don't have to guess. You don't even have to hope. You can know before you go where you're going when you get there. Does that make sense? So, for those who say, well, nobody knows for sure, that's not what the Bible says. These things have I written that you may know. Know what? That you have eternal life. Yeah. Why is it important that you know that? Because if you don't know that, you'll be carrying a burden that God did not want you to carry. All right. If you don't know that you're saved... You're going to be wondering, wondering, where are my keys at? Where's my salvation at? Did I leave it over that girl's house last night? I need to tell this joke, so I'm going to go and tell it. That was a preacher who used to ride his bike around town. He'd ride his bike around town, and one day he announced to a friend that his bike had been stolen. Everybody knew he was a riding bike preacher, and his bike was stolen. And so uh, his friend said, you ought to get up there in church, and you ought to go through the Ten Commandments, and you ought to make them feel guilty that they stole your bike. And the preacher said, that's a good idea. 
So he started, and the friend was in church, and he started reading the commandments, and got, and, and his friend was a little bit surprised that he didn't, he didn't get to the point where he said, thou shalt not steal. So he asked him after church, he said, why, why didn't you go all the way through and tell him, he said, well, when I got to the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, I remember where I left my bike. <laughs> mm. Now listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Let me give you some scriptures that'll help you know about salvation. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse twenty-two. Here's what it says: Who also was sealed and given the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14 uses the same word, guarantee. In other words, one of the ways I know I'm saved is that I, I have his spirit. The Bible says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And that's found in Romans chapter 8. So if you have his spirit... You have eternal life. If you don't have his spirit, you don't. Now, remember last week I said, Jesus said that uh, uh, the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it's going. Yeah, right. Okay, and I asked last week how many of you have seen wind, and, 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 and y'all said nobody, right? So I'm going to ask a question. How many of y'all know Michael Jordan? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody just raise your hand. You just lied. Unless you spend time with Michael Jordan, you don't know him. You know of him, but you don't know him. There are a whole lot of people who know of Jesus, but don't know Jesus. They heard about Jesus, but they don't know him. They never met him. So it's important that you know him. Why is it important that you know him? Because Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, he said, my sheep. Y'all turn that right quick. St. John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29. He would say, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Who's this? And I give them eternal life, and they shall never, what? Perish. In other words, Jesus doesn't give you something and take it back. Jesus does not give you something and take it back. He says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Now, what does never mean? Never. Not going to happen. It says here, neither shall anyone snatch them, what? Out of my hand. And my Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to do what? Snatch them out of my Father's hand. My wife this week, she she. She had been calling all state for almost two months, trying to get them to reimburse her for, for something that they were responsible to reimburse her. And I seen her on the phone waiting and trying to call them and call them and call them. And so finally she said this, I'm not, I'm not, feeling, like, I'm not feeling good in your hands right now. They called her the very next day and said, the check is on the way. <laughs> they were concerned after all that that she was getting ready to drop them. See, there are some people who believe that when they've done wrong, and we all have done wrong, we somehow believe God going to drop us now. But the scripture says those that are in his hand, See, it's not you holding God's hand, it's God holding your hand. That's where the power is. That's where the grace is. That's good news. That's good news. Now, that don't mean you go out and do any and everything you want to do. See, because, because if you've really been born again, 
right. You want to do his will. Yeah. Now, 1 John chapter 1, I love 1 John chapter 1 because, boy, I need that a whole lot of time. 1 John chapter 1 says, if we confess our sins, yeah. he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins, Angela, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, Yes, Jesus died 2,000 years ago. I wasn't born 2,000 years ago. I hadn't even sinned when Jesus died. So Jesus died for my sins before I was even born. And then he not only did that will, but he died for the sins when I, uh, that I became aware of and I confessed it and I accepted him. But when I accepted him, I realized that there were some sins I've committed even after I had accepted him. Guess what? Jesus died for your sins before you were born, after you were born, all the way that you go through life. He died for your past sins, your present sins, and even the future sins that you will commit. And in spite of all of that, he's still holding on to you. So let me tell you why you ought to be happy today. Listen to this, listen to this. The scripture says, all have sinned and come short. Now look at, go to Psalms 103 real quick. 103. I need to turn down myself. Psalm 103. Here it is. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, Janet, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You mean to tell me that God provided me some benefits? And he's telling me don't forget them? You mean I got benefits, Sister Wade, and I'm not to forget them? Well, look what it says here. Who forgives all your iniquities. And I had to look up, well, what is an iniquity? Yeah. And iniquity yes. means you are, you are not equal to God's holiness. Right. It means that you have, it is that sin that is on the inside. Yeah. It's called an inward motivation. Yeah. How can I explain that to you? You know how you can sin by your action you can also sin by your attitude yeah. so iniquity iniquity is that thing that is, is when you want to sin yeah. I had a conversation with a friend this week and we talked about uh, about there are three types of sin and one of the sins we identified is the sin of choice y'all yeah. know there are some sins that we just choose to hold on to yeah. can I just give you one of them if I just eat 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 and overeat, that's called gluttony. Yeah. Nobody forced you to put all that food in your mouth. That is a sin of what? Choice. Yeah. Boy, I didn't get a lot of amen on that one. That's called a sin of choice. If you go gulp it down and you stumble it all over the place <laughs> and you get drunk, that's a sin of choice. Boy, let me keep going. <laughs> but then, as God starts to work on you and you realize you don't have to give in the sin, then that's called the sin of struggle. Yes, 
Now you mean to tell me if I, if I am guaranteed salvation, I'm still struggling with sin? Yeah, as long as you are in this body, sin is always going to be present. Okay? Now he says this. He says, not only will he give you your iniquity, but he'll forgive you your transgression. You know what transgression is? That means that's the, that is the sin in which you move towards doing something. It, it means it, it's something that you do. It, it means going beyond the boundaries. Yeah. It, it means God says don't trespass and you trespass. Yeah. God said don't go there and you went there. Yeah. God said don't, don't do that and you did it. There's a transgression that takes place. Yeah. Now, one guy said it this way. Whatever you flirt with, You'll fall for. So I'm asking the question, why flirt with sin? If you hang around the wrong places and people start tempting you to do something, guess what? You probably are going to do it. So there are some places you ought not to go. You ought to just put lockdowns. So I ain't going there. I'm not going there. I'm not. You know, I was trying to watch a movie the other day, and I couldn't even finish watching it. Because as soon as I saw some stuff, I, I got to turn it. I really wanted to stay on that channel, though. But I turned it. It, was a, it, was, it, it had some I, I can't. I can't watch it. There are some, you know, right now, TV is so bad. You might well just throw the TV away. Because they're really, they're promoting a lifestyle that ain't godly. And if I put that junk in my mind, then I'm going to start accepting the junk. Does that make sense? They're paying people to act a fool on TV. Because they're going to act the fool. Because they know there are fools who will watch them acting the fool. Yeah. Boy, y'all got quiet. Let me keep going. So let me give you real three things about forgiveness. Here's why you know you're saved. Number one, Jesus completed all that needed to be done. Yeah. On the cross, he said these words, it is finished. He said it's finished. In other words, he was saying, all that I needed to do in order for men to be saved, I have done. I have shed my blood for the remission of their sins. It's finished. It means it's complete. In other words, Jesus does not have to come back again and get on the cross in order for you to go to heaven. Because he did it one time and one time only, and that's enough. Now, that's Bible. He did it one time. Now, listen to this. He removed your, all your transgressions, but then that's a good thing. And, and I wish more Christians would practice this. Go to Isaiah chapter 43. Y'all yes. need to highlight this, underline this, don't forget it, because this is something that is keeping the church from being all that God has called us to be. Here it is. Isaiah 43, verse 25. This is God speaking. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions. All right. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. He says, I blot it out. I mark it out. I, I remove it. I remove, I remove from the record your transgressions of all your sins. I blot it out. It's not there. Now, why does he do it? He says, for my 
own sake. Now, why would God blot out all my transgressions for his sake? Yeah. Can I tell you why? Nancy, God wants to have a relationship with us. Yeah. He loves us so much that he, he blots out our transgressions for his. He wants a relationship with us. And then get this. He says, and I will, rem I will not remember your sins. All right. That's good news. Well, you, you mean tell me God is forgetful? He can't be forgetful because the Bible said God is uh, om omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. In other words, it's that God chooses not to, by his own will, he chooses not to remember our sins. Now, I should have got somebody standing up, clapping, giving God a, a, a round of applause. You mean to tell me God chooses, even though he knows I've sinned, he chooses not to remember it, he chooses not to bring it up? He chooses, he said, I choose not to bring it up. Can you imagine us having a conversation with God and, and God bringing up all the sins we've committed? Can you imagine that? Aren't you glad God doesn't bring up your sins? Aren't you glad he didn't remind you of your sin? Aren't you glad he didn't, he, he, he didn't tell you about your sin that you did yesterday? Aren't you happy that he chose not to remember it? So I asked the question, why do, why do we choose to remember everybody else's sins? If God chose to forget their sin, why can't we forget their sins? Now, is that not in the Bible? See, some people are not coming to church because we want to bring up their past. The scripture says, Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, and with his stripes we are healed. That means we're made whole, we're healthy again. Yeah. So God chooses not to remember. But then there's another scripture. I'm not going to go to it. I just want you to write it down. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. It uses the same words. God doesn't remember. Sister Harris, he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. He know you a chain smoker. Boy, see, 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 this is, here's what I know. When you start bringing up specific sins and you start stepping on everybody's toes in the church, everybody's going to be real, real quiet. And, and then there's going to be some say, I just hope they don't bring up my sin. <laughs> I, I, I get that. I understand. I've been there. I know how you feel. He removes all your transgressions. He remembers your sin no more. This is, the third thing is he releases us from all our iniquities. You know what that means? The word forgive literally means release. So when you forgive somebody, you know what you're doing? You're releasing them. Forgive us this day. You're saying to God, God, release me from my sins. Am I right? Anybody here? Now, we're getting ready to celebrate tomorrow, the 4th of July, right? That's freedom. And the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Set you free. I'm trying to tell somebody right now that if you are a Christian, you ought to know that you're saved. You shouldn't have to guess it. You shouldn't have to hope it. You shouldn't be trying to work for it. It's a free gift. 
Well, there was a famous athlete whose, whose name I'm not going to name, but y'all know who he was. He was in the Bronco. <laughs> and he promised that if he got set free, he was going to be looking for the killer. He got tried for a crime that many thought he was guilty and others thought he was not. And a jury had to decide whether he was guilty or innocent based on the evidence and the evidence alone. Not how you felt about him, not how you admired him, but based on the evidence. And the jury decided not guilty. Even if he was to get on national news and call a press conference and say, I did it. The laws of our country say you can't be tried for the same crime <laughs> twice. It's called double anonymity. You can't be tried twice for the same crime. Now, if the laws of man recognize that, don't you know that God recognizes that too? And all I'm trying to tell somebody is, Jesus already paid the price for your sin, so you can't be found guilty twice. Yeah. He's already forgiven you. Yeah. You've already been declared free. Yeah. Not by a jury of 12, but by a jury of one. Yeah. So every time the devil bring up your sin, remind them what Jesus did. Yeah. He paid it all. All to him I owe. Boy, that's good news right now. Because we're getting ready to take the Lord's Supper. Isn't it good to know that all your sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus? And if you want to go to heaven, all you have to do is ask him into your heart. Confess your sins, acknowledge them, and he'll forgive you. He'll wash away every sin. Don't carry that around that you shouldn't have to carry. But see, there may be some people in the room. You haven't confessed. You know, but you haven't confessed. And perhaps you haven't confessed because you feel like you don't need to get right with God. And there are people walking around right now in our world, Brother Ivory, who feel like, I'm not coming up there. I ain't going to admit nothing. I'm not going to tell them. I get you. But, it, but there is one thing I do know. As sure as I'm standing in front of you right now, everybody in this room, and I mean everybody, is going to have to stand before God. Everybody. If the Lord tarries, one by one, he's going to take us away. Yes, one by one. And eventually, he'll take you away. And if you're standing before God without a lawyer who's never lost a case, then you're going to be found guilty. 
Is that what you want? I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want you to leave this world without Jesus. So every, every minister who cares about the souls of people have to make a plea. And I love what Billy Graham would do every service. He played the same old song, but, but, but the song said, just as you are, come just as you are. Don't, don't wait and try to get clean, because none of us will get clean enough. Don't try to wait until you get gooder, because none of us will ever be gooder enough. Just come. And there may be some people who've accepted Christ. And you got fire insurance. That's good. But you need to be in the church. You need to be where he placed you. And I tell people all the time, I don't mind telling them this, Tony. You don't have to join being Washington. But you need to be in somebody's church where they teach the Bible, where you can grow in your faith. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that if Jesus died for you and you've accepted him as your personal savior and you have his spirit, you have a comfort of knowing that no matter what, you're in the Father's hands. Now, I know there are some people, right, I know some people right now saying, I don't believe a word you said, preacher. You can lose it. My pastor back home told me you can lose it. No. You can't lose what you never had. But if you have it, you can't lose it. I would tell anybody in this room, if you believe otherwise, meet me next week. And I'll, sp I'll spend every time talking with you, um, and I'll share the Bible verses with you, and you can share the Bible verses with me. Because I know. 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written that you may know. Now, if there is somebody here who wants to accept Christ as their Savior for the first time, or you want to mean it this time, I'm going to ask you to bow with me for a word of prayer. And repeat these words wherever you are. Just repeat these words. Father, I come now in the name of Jesus. I understand that I cannot get saved by works or by performance, but it's by your grace that I am saved. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that he rose from the grave on the third day. And I accept him now as my personal Savior and as my Lord, I commit my life to getting to know Jesus more dearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it and, and you don't have a church home, you come see me. And if, if, if there's anybody who wants to make this church home their church home, you come see me. Now, we're getting ready to take the Lord's Supper. Now, you need to know, I'm just giving you the Bible. That's all I can give you. If you're not a Christian, you should not take the Lord's Supper. Did everybody understand that? If you're not a believer, 
If you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, we're not trying to offend anybody, but don't take the Lord's Supper. Okay? It's only for believers. Now, there may be some people who say, well, Sneed, I did a lot of bad this week, and I don't feel like I should take the Lord's Supper. If that's your attitude, you haven't heard a word I said. You'll never be good enough, worthy enough to take it. The Bible says not to take it in an unworthy manner. But it didn't say you're unworthy to take it if you're a believer. That's all it means. So I want you to look back at the cross. Knowing that Jesus died for your sins. And I need, I need to encourage some parents right now. Because maybe your child accepted Christ and they're not in church right now. And perhaps you are, you're wondering, you're wondering, you're wondering. Can I say, if you put it in them and God accepted them, you don't have to worry. Somebody need to hear that. If you raise them right and they accepted Christ, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Somebody needs to hear that. See, there are going to be some of us who are going to be in heaven. We may not have a lot of crowns on our head, but we, but we there. That's good news. Now, when we take the Lord's Supper, we take it in remembrance of Jesus. So I'm going to ask the question, do you remember what Jesus did for you? I'm asking the question. Do you remember? Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Who do you love? Do you really love him? Why do you love him? Do you love him because he died for your sins? Do you love him because he stayed on the cross and would not come down to save himself? That's, good. That's a good enough reason to love him. Amen? Amen. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Amen. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. We take this bread symbolic of the body of Jesus which hung on the cross for our sins. Father God, we take the drink which symbolizes the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sin. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness and for the adoption that we have into the family. In Jesus' name. This symbolizes the, the body of Jesus which was broken for you. May we all take and eat together. The wine symbolizes the blood of Jesus which was shed on Calvary's cross for us. May we all drink together. Now one day, in the not too distant future, Jesus is going to take the Lord's Supper with us anew in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. We apologize for the announcements today. The last thing we're going to do as you exit from the church, and I, and, and I have some people that are on vacation, 
They, some went to Vegas, some went to uh, other places. And when you go on vacation this summer, as some of you may be getting ready to go, take the Lord with you. Let him be your guide, let him be your protector, let him be your deliverer, amen. Now if you're a visitor, if you'll just take the time to fill out that card that they gave you, so we can make sure that we have a chance to correspond with you. We're going to pray over the offering. Sister, Sister Lanita, can the announcements go on? Can we do it? I want to pray over the offering first. Father, bless the gifts and the givers. Bless the tithes. Let it be used for the ongoing of our kingdom work. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. After the announcements, you are excused. Amen. Hello and good morning, my brothers and sisters of the Ben Washington Baptist Church. I'm Minister White with your news, information, announcements, and reminders. Yes. And I couldn't do it by myself. Next to me is Lanita, who does such a fabulous and wonderful job. She's so exciting, so interesting, so effervescent. Good morning. How are you? Good morning and hello to my Ben Washington family. Happy Independence Day. Yay. And today is Eat Beans Day. Deacon Tony is going to love that. He loves beans. But let's get started. This Monday, all activities are canceled in honor of Independence Day. Amen. All right, so let's move on to Tuesday. Tuesday, it is youth choir rehearsal. Please join us. Parents, you may join us also. The youth is summertime, so we need all the help we can get. Come on out with us, 7 p.m. choir rehearsal with uh, Jace and Minister Collins and Kevon. Everybody will be here. And there's no better, to, no better day than to study the Bible other than yes. Wednesday, noonday Bible study uh, in person in our sanctuary. And then Wednesday evenings on Zoom, we have another Bible study. So please join us for those days. And don't forget, I said during Wednesday at the daytime, Larry makes sure we all eat. Ooh, yes, yes indeed. indeed. Yes, indeed. Maybe you have beans on the menu. <laughs> Baby Larry will. Larry makes the best beans ever. All right. And at the same time, the youth are meeting with the Youth Power Hour with Minister Sutton and Tia and Barbara and Rocky. All the youth are there. We have so much fun on Wednesday All right. evenings. Skipping Saturday, let's move on to your favorite day of the week, Sunday. Sunday, and Today. don't forget, each Sunday we meet at 10 a.m. right here in the sanctuary mm -hmm. or on Zoom. 8.45 is Sunday school hour. We meet in person over in the JRS building or on Zoom. The Sunday school team is fascinating. So please go out on the website and see all the new pictures of us meeting the uh, young adult ladies meet at the same time. So Sunday school at 845 and today is Communion, communion Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Amen to that. Let's get started. So what else is coming up at BWBC Woo. this week? This week, Let July 4th, uh, Monday, church office is closed uh -huh. and activities are canceled in honor of Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Welcome to all of our new members. Our church are growing, is growing. So new member orientation class is next Sunday at 8.45 a.m. in the JRS building right next door. The class meets each second and fourth Sunday. See Sister Rosalind Walker for all the details. All right, let's ramp up for VBS, July yes. 9th. We got to kick off training brunch. Want to yes, talk about oh my God, this is for our teachers, our staff, and our volunteers. We want to get ramped up. This is in the fellowship hall. Well, that's where we're going to get started. Uh -huh. The training is actually going to be all over. We're going to have a tour okay. of the building. We're going to go over assignments, and we're going to go over the teacher curriculum, and we're going to cover the music. All We're right. going to get ready for VBS. VBS is July 27th, 28th, and 29th. You may uh, pre-register right now. Go to our website, or if you're in the building, walk in the back to the bulletin boards. You'll see a QR code. It'll take you straight to the registration. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you this year. You, my goodness, I am so happy. Uh -huh. July 13th, Texas Rangers game, 7 p.m., $20 per person. July 15th through the 17th, our Amplified Teens, that's ages 12 through 18. We're going to Branson, Missouri. We're going to witness the production of Jesus Live, $75 per person. And then on August 6th, it's our back-to-school rally. We are asking for sponsors. If your heart 
and your budget will allow, please sponsor some of our kids today. See Sister Tia or Reverend Sutton. And special thanks to all of our sponsors. Our BWBC family is so yeah, generous. You'll be glad you did. It's a great feeling when you're helping someone through uh, you know, tough times or whatever it may be to it further is. our education, especially about you. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. July 16th, I know that's Reverend White's birthday, but it is also our food pantry day. 10 a.m. here at the church, out in the parking lot, see Sister Jackie Arkadai, who is our pantry coordinator and does a great job for our food giveaway. So if you know someone in need, you don't have to wait for that day. Please call our church office. We will be glad. We will be glad to help them. We don't want anyone to go without in our community. All right. Happy glad. Saturday. August 13th, we're excited about our yes. 2022 celebration of the Senior Saints Ministry. Uh, it's our day out at Perry Steakhouse. Registration yes. is closed. It's closed, but don't forget, that's at noon. If you have any questions, there's updated information right now on our website. So there's food choices you want to go to, but we want to make sure that everybody knows that that date and that time is 12 noon. And in Tuesday, the month of August, well, on Tuesday, the month of yes. August, <laughs> uh, our illustrious Senior Saints will... Uh, uh, choir will practice at 7 o'clock. And on Sunday, August 28th, is our annual day, and that will be here at the church. Yes. All right. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking, from breaking takes news. Three ministry. We are growing through technology. We are now on the Slap, Slack app. Great news, guys. If you don't know what the Slack app is, you can download it. You got relationship questions, issues or just want prayer, me too. Just download the Slack app on any of your devices. Join the channel, hashtag mt 3 I want to know. Minister Sam Jones and Sonia Jones is there for you. It's confidential with all of the biblical-based solutions. Go to our website and see Team Jones for all of the details. Now, how awesome is, is that? that? Ministry leaders. <laughs> yeah, ministry leaders. You know what's next? Send your announcements via our website if you want your announcements to be here on our news channel. And uh, send them to Candy Dun 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 and Candy will talk to you if you have to call her and ask yeah. her some questions about yeah, it. Yes, she will. Right? She'll answer your call anytime. Well, let's see. Let's see. Thank you for calling the Ben Washington Baptist Church. How may I help you? It's Candy Dunning. I'm great. How are you? Every Tuesday before 12 noon. Monday night will be fine as long as we have it before 12 noon on Tuesday. It's every Tuesday. No, if you bring it late, it won't be until next week. Or you can spell it with either one, a large T or a small T. Capital T-U-E-S-D-A-Y. You want me to spell it with a small T? T-U-E-S-D-A-Y. Your ink pen has run out of ink? You got a pencil or even a crayon? Sure, I'll hold for a few minutes. Hello, are you there? You got that now? Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, candy is full of it. <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. Where y'all stand? So, don't forget to join us on our website, on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Don't now repeat after me. These things have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. You are excused. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.